Hello and welcome to, to sharks, I guess. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Ecology has taken a much closer and detailed look at the diet of the whale shark, famous for being the largest fish in the ocean, and of course, the largest shark. The whale shark is a filter feeder, more on that in a video we did for Shark Week a few years ago. Much of what the whale shark feeds on is plankton, a collection of small living creatures that float around in the ocean and form the base diet for many of the sea's inhabitants. This study found that the whale shark also feeds significantly on sargassum, a floating macroalgae, making the whale shark an omnivore. In fact, this classification would make the whale shark the world's largest omnivore. This new understanding of the whale shark's diet was done by analysing its tissue in comparison with likely food sources, such as plankton and sargassum. A fascinating study into one of the most well-known and interesting species of shark there is. And in other news, a study has been published in the journal Marine Biology which tells the curious story of a Greenland shark being found in the waters in Belize, in the Western Caribbean. The Greenland shark is a particularly rare shark, usually found in the freezing Arctic, so finding it in this locality is certainly unexpected. Very little is known about the Greenland shark, and so it's not a scientific uproar that this has happened. If anything, this is just another discovery that might let us gather further information about this mysterious ancient creature. For more on the Greenland shark, check out our video on them. And just a quick little story here, given how it's not actually attached to a study, a team at the University of Edinburgh believe they have found the most distant galaxy ever observed by humans from an image taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. It's believed that this galaxy is being observed 35 billion light years away, making it only 235 million years older than the Big Bang, which is simply incredible. The result will need a full study for confirmation, however, but we'll be sure to report on that when it does come through. It's been quite an action-packed week for paleontology news too. The biggest piece of news was the publication of the inevitable paper refuting the idea suggested earlier this year that Tyrannosaurus could be split into three different species, T. rex, T. imperator and T. regina. This new publication explains the various problems with this hypothesis, including the fact that the way these species are defined are based on features that overlap between them, that several Tyrannosaurus skulls could not be assigned to any of the species based on these definitions, and that there are issues with the way they divided up the stratigraphy of the Hell Creek Formation. The study also analysed variation among Tyrannosaurus specimens, finding that the amount of variation within this genus is not particularly exceptional, and certainly doesn't group nicely into the three distinct categories suggested by the previous paper. So, they say that only T. rex is valid. Another interesting study published this week has reported the first freshwater plesiosaur remains from Morocco. The paper explains how although these marine reptiles are mostly known from marine deposits, sometimes they have been found in brackish to freshwater environments, indicating that they were capable of adapting to a range of conditions. The remains described in this paper include teeth, vertebrae and a humerus, and come from the river deposits of the Kem Kem group. They likely belong to Leptoclydids, a group of small body plesiosaurs that inhabited a lot of shallow, nearshore and non-marine environments at this time in the Cretaceous. And the researchers suggest they could either have been rare visitors from the ocean that were freshwater tolerant, or specifically freshwater adapted plesiosaurs. And finally, there's also the wonderful news of the description of the oldest known crown group Cnidarian, the phylum that includes jellyfish and corals. Named Aurora Lumina Attenborough after Sir David Attenborough, the fossil comes from Charnwood Forest in the UK, rocks that date back to the Ediacaran period around 360 million years ago. It's found to be a relative of the Medusozoans, the group including jellyfish, and the discovery shows that life was actually diversifying and giving rise to modern phyla even before the apparent explosion in the Cambrian period. Well, that's it for this year's 7 Days of Shark Science. I do hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next year.